They say mountains do not breathe, yet Mount St. Helens has always been an exception. In its heart lies a cavernous hollow where ice, rock and molten memory battle endlessly. On certain days, hikers swear they can see the crater exhale, not with soft mist, but with something that seems far more unsettling, a pulse of heat, as though the volcano's chest is rising again. What could it mean when a mountain that destroyed itself in 1980 still trembles as if it has lungs? The reports began quietly, a glimmer of light above the dome, flickering in the dusk like a flame against snow. Was it sunlight refracting off ice, or was it something far older, far deeper, a sign that magma had not finished its ascent? Scientists, skeptical of folklore but careful never to ignore a mountain's whispers, went back to the data. They discovered a puzzle that, once pieced together, would reshape how we think of a cooling volcano. At first glance, the dome at the centre of Mount St. Helens appears lifeless. After the great eruption in 1980 reduced the once proud peak by roughly 1,300 feet, around 400 metres, it left behind a yawning horseshoe-shaped crater that still dominates the Cascade skyline. That crater stretches about one mile, around 1.6 kilometres, across and more than two miles, around 3.2 kilometres, from rim to rim. Inside that wound, nature began its slow healing. Crater glacier spilled inward, growing despite global warming, curling around a stubby pile of rock, the lava dome built in bursts between 2004 and 2008. That dome is steep, jagged and scarred, but to the casual observer, it has looked the same for years. Yet appearances deceive. The dome is not static rock, but a frozen echo of magma that once surged skyward. Composed of dacite, thick, silica-rich lava, it hardened in place when it could no longer rise. Each spine of lava that pushed through the glacier between 2004 and 2008 stands as testimony to pressure that demanded release. But once those spines cooled, the world assumed the volcano's breath had slowed. Many even thought the heat within was simply fading away. But mountains remember, and mountains betray their secrets in subtle ways. When volcanologists examined satellite infrared data spanning more than a decade, they found that the dome's warmth had indeed waned, but not evenly. Heat did not escape in a smooth decline. It pulsed, shifted, vanished in one vent, only to reappear in another. A 2025 paper published in the Journal of Volcanology and Geothermal Research confirmed that thermal output has been decreasing overall, yet also highlighted something strange. Certain vents, once blazing at nearly 716 degrees Fahrenheit, about 380 degrees Celsius, had cooled to barely 140 degrees Fahrenheit, around 60 degrees Celsius, in just a few short years. This was expected, yet the pattern of decline was not. It hinted at hidden rearrangements below the surface. The mountain was not extinguished, it was evolving. Consider this paradox. While the dome's visible heat was fading, the earth beneath it quivered with new life. From late 2023 into mid-2024, seismometers around the crater began ticking with an unusual rhythm. More than 300 tiny earthquakes rattled the deep roots of the volcano, some two and a half to six miles, about four to ten kilometers down. Their magnitudes were small, most less than one, imperceptible to anyone standing nearby. Yet their clustering spoke volumes. They were the sound of magma migrating, stretching rock as it searched for space. Could magma be sneaking upward again? If so, why had the surface grown colder, not hotter? That contradiction gnawed at the research teams. Normally, rising magma translates into swelling of the surface, deformation measurable by GPS. Yet no bulges appeared. Instruments perched on the crater rim detected no dramatic uplift. The dome, if anything, was sagging, collapsing under its own cooled weight. One flank, measured with laser surveys, had slumped by more than 115 feet, about 35 meters, since 2009. So here was the riddle. Beneath, fresh injections of molten rock, above a husk cooling and caving inward. Mystery deepened in the ice caves. For years, explorers documented vast subglacial tunnels carved where geothermal heat met the encroaching glacier. Some caves ran nearly half a mile, about 800 meters, 
their ceilings dripping with surreal blue light. By 2024, those same passages had shrunk to less than 200 meters, around 660 feet. Whole caverns had collapsed, swallowed into rubble. Where they vanished, fumaroles, vents of steam and gas sprang up instead, as if the mountain had exchanged one airway for another. One might ask, was the mountain choking, its breath rerouted under duress? Adding to the puzzle was timing. Many of the odd bursts of fumarolic steam occurred during spring melt. As snowmelt cascaded into cracks, it seeped down until it touched pockets of residual heat. The sudden flash of water to vapor could create explosive jets. This had been seen before in the 1980s when phreatic blasts punctuated the dome building cycle. But now, with the dome supposedly cooling, why were these steam vents still so restless? Some observers swore they saw fire, an orange glow against the glacier at twilight. Scientists dismissed this as illusion. Sulfur gases, when escaping, can burn with a faint blue flame if conditions align. Static discharges within ash can also mimic sparks. But no instrument captured flames and no camera confirmed combustion. Yet the perception of fire persisted. Human senses, after all, are easily deceived by mountains where light, steam and imagination collide. Still, perception mattered. A mountain that seems to breathe flame stirs both awe and dread. To unravel fact from phantasm, scientists tightened their net of monitoring. Every vent temperature was measured, every plume sampled. Gas analyzers revealed declining sulfur dioxide emissions, consistent with waning magma release. Thermal cameras showed the dome's hotspots dwindling. Drone surveys mapped each fresh crack, each subtle collapse. And yet, beneath this apparent decline, seismic murmurs continued. Something unseen was refueling the volcano's veins. It was then that the true scale of the mystery emerged. The US Geological Survey had long suspected that Mount St. Helens recharges itself in cycles. After each eruptive decade, magma seeps upward, slowly filling a reservoir kilometers below. This recharge does not always culminate in eruption. Sometimes it lingers as pressure, sometimes it retreats. But the data from 2024 confirmed what geophysicists feared. The recharge had resumed. The mountain's battery, drained after 2008, was filling again. Yet unlike in past cycles, the dome itself was not responding with growth or uplift. Instead, it was withering, a paradox, a riddle in stone, a body cooling but a heart quietly quickening. What would happen when the deep pulse finally reached the cold husk above? Would the glacier smother it, or would the dome rupture once more? Could a silent dome suddenly awaken with fire, or was the mountain rehearsing a drama that would never reach its climax? The scientists, cautious in their phrasing, refrained from prophecy. But they admitted this much. The lava dome of Mount St. Helens is not merely a monument to the past. It is a living interface between magma below and ice above, a place where water, gas and rock negotiate uneasy truces. And sometimes, in that negotiation, what looks like fire is really the mountain's breath, a reminder that what cools on the surface may still burn within. The deeper scientists dug into the puzzle of Mount St. Helens' lava dome, the stranger the contradictions became. What they found was not a mountain fading into silence, but one reorganizing itself in ways almost too subtle to perceive. Every signal pointed in a different direction, some toward quiet cooling, others toward hidden awakening. To read the mountain was like deciphering a coded message where half the symbols were erased. Measurements from thermal cameras mounted on aircraft revealed surface vents cooling steadily, their temperatures dropping below 180 degrees Fahrenheit, around 80 degrees Celsius, in many locations that once boiled at over 500 degrees Fahrenheit, about 260 degrees Celsius. These numbers on paper would suggest a volcano retreating toward dormancy. But paper does not record the deep rumble of earthquakes that kept occurring miles beneath the dome, the kind that betray magma on the move. It was as though the surface and the subsurface were speaking different languages, one whispering of exhaustion, the other humming with renewal. How could the same mountain contain such contradictions? The answer, scientists came to realize, lies in the complicated architecture of magma systems. Unlike a single chamber, Mount St. Helens harbors a network of reservoirs layered like secret rooms stacked beneath the earth. The shallow reservoir, lying about three to six miles, 
roughly five to 10 kilometers below the crater, had been largely drained in the eruptions of 2004 to 2008. But deeper still, at around 15 miles, roughly 24 kilometers beneath the surface, geophysical imaging suggested another source, a vast zone where mantle heat continually supplies molten material upward. When fresh magma begins rising from those depths, it does not immediately reveal itself with heat at the surface. Instead, it stalls, crystallizes, and sometimes mingles with older batches of dacite already cooled into a mush-like consistency. That mingling, paradoxically, can absorb heat locally, cooling the dome even as the system as a whole grows more restless. To the instruments above, the volcano appears to fade. To the scientists reading the signals, it is breathing deeper than ever. Then came the gases. Samples of fumarolic steam taken in 2024 carried an unusual isotopic signature, helium-3, a tracer from the mantle itself. The presence of helium-3, even in small amounts, is a fingerprint of magma rising from great depth. Though the concentrations were low, their meaning was clear. Somewhere beneath the dome, the system had tapped directly into the mantle's reservoir. In human terms, it was as though the mountain's heart had reconnected to its artery. What puzzled researchers further was the pattern of deformation. Traditional GPS instruments perched on the crater's rim detected almost no uplift. Yet INSAR, a radar technique that measures ground movement from satellites, hinted at subtle inflation in an area a few miles northwest of the dome on the volcano's outer flank. This displacement was no more than a fraction of an inch, a few millimeters, but consistent over time. If magma was intruding laterally rather than vertically, could the dome remain cold while its energy leaked sideways? The possibility unsettled everyone. A lateral intrusion could mean magma was bypassing the old pathways entirely, spreading toward regions where faults and brittle rock might eventually fracture. Such intrusions have preceded dome-building episodes before, but they have also triggered unexpected explosions when trapped gas finds no escape. Meanwhile, the glacier inside the crater continued its quiet transformation. Once thought of as a stabilizing blanket, Insulating the dome, the crater glacier has now grown to cover more than two square miles, over five square kilometers. Its depth in places exceeds 600 feet, about 180 meters. Under its immense weight, the dome is being squeezed, compacted and fractured. This interaction between ice and rock is not passive. As cracks deepen, meltwater seeps downward, flashing to steam against pockets of heat. Each of those steam bursts is a reminder that water is both the volcano's most vulnerable weakness and its most volatile weapon. What then does it mean when a mountain both cools and stirs, exhales and implodes, hides its fire beneath a glacier yet trembles as though rehearsing for release? The scientists do not answer in absolutes, but they circle the same conclusion. Mount St. Helens has entered a new phase, one not yet defined by eruption but neither by peace. It is a stage of quiet recharging, a period when magma accumulates invisibly, and the dome above acts as a decaying mask. The true activity is concealed, rearranging chambers miles underground, buying time for the next cycle. And that next cycle may not unfold as predictably as the last. In 2004, the dome announced itself with obvious spines, hot extrusion, glowing at night. Today it chooses subtlety, hidden tremors, gas signatures and ghostly heat that dwindles even as magma rises. It is as though the mountain has learned to disguise its intentions. This concealment makes prediction difficult. How do you prepare for a volcano that appears to cool while quietly refueling? How do you reassure nearby communities that the mountain is not preparing for eruption when every whisper from below contradicts the silence above? Perhaps the greatest mystery lies not in whether Mount St. Helens will erupt again, geologists agree it will, but in how it chooses to begin. Will the next eruption be heralded by obvious swelling, or will it be sudden, hidden until the moment the dome finally cracks? Will the glacier dampen the violence, or will its meltwater amplify the fury in an explosive surge? No one can say. What can be said is this, the mountain is neither asleep nor dying. Its apparent weakness is part of a deeper transformation. Its dome, shrinking and cooling, is not an ending, but a veil. Beneath that veil, 
Magma pulses upward, silent, invisible, biding its time. Mountains are not supposed to breathe, but Mount St. Helens does. And when its breath becomes fire again, the world will see not just a volcano awakening, but a riddle resolved in the most dramatic way nature allows. If this deep dive into the mystery of Mount St. Helens left you questioning what might be stirring beneath its icy dome, don't let the story end here. Hit that like button. Share this with friends who crave the same pulse of discovery and make sure you subscribe so you never miss the next unfolding secret of our restless planet. And if you want this investigation to reach an even wider audience, do us one more favor. Tap that hype icon. Every tap pushes the story further, helping the world see what lies beneath the silence.